We're going to discuss your recent study looking at CD14 positive monocytes in rheumatoid arthritis. But could I start by asking you to introduce yourselves? I'm Professor um, Ursula Fearon and I'm Head of Molecular Rheumatology in the Trinity Biosciences Institute in Trinity College, Dublin. And basically our group um, is focused on investigating the pathogenic mechanisms involved in driving autoimmune diseases, specifically rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis. Hello, um, my name is Megan Hanlon, Dr. Megan Hanlon. I am a postdoctoral research fellow um, in Professor Ursa Fearon's Molecular Rheumatology Research Group here in Trinity College, Dublin. And so my PhD research um, and continuing on into my postdoctoral studies has been focused on the myeloid compartment of the synovial joint. So although there are a lot of cell types within the synovial joint, um, my research focus has been on myeloid cells, including monocytes and macrophages. And I'd just like to emphasize there that um, our research is very patient focused. So what we call is translational research bent, bent to bedside approach. And just to emphasize that there's three partners in our research. There's the clinical team, there's the scientific team, but most importantly, there's the patient, because without the patient, we actually couldn't do this type of research. So I really want to highlight their involvement and engagement in research. Could you tell us a bit about the background to this study uh, and what was already known about rheumatoid arthritis? Um, about 20 years ago, on the right hand side there, number three, where we have chronic rheumatoid arthritis, that's where we treated patients um, 20 years ago, where they had really established RA and functional disability. So it was way too late and patients' joints were destroyed. Then with great medication over the last 20 years, we started to treat patients much earlier here at the clinical onset. Um, and then more recently, which is kind of the focus of some of this paper is we're starting to look at um, individuals, actually, not patients, individuals, pre-disease and trying to predict whether they will develop rheumatoid arthritis. So in this paper, we looked at two um, cohorts, basically. We looked at patients with established RA, and then we looked at a second cohort, and these are individuals at risk of developing RA. So just to maybe give you a bit of background on both um, cohorts, basically um, rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic autoimmune disease characterized by systemic inflammation and at the same time, we get new blood vessels in the synovium, which is the tissue in the joint. And these new blood vessels allow these immune cells to migrate into the joint. They activate inflammation and cause cartilage and bone destruction and functional disability. Now, we don't know what the trigger for rheumatoid arthritis is, but we know it's a combination of genetic and environmental factors. And it's this combination that causes a change in a protein on our own cells and our own tissue. And that you know, causes our immune system to mistakenly attack ourselves. Normally our immune system attacks foreign pathogens that come in like viruses and bacteria. Whereas in autoimmune diseases, the actual, our immune system attacks ourselves. So what it causes is our immune cells in our circulation to become activated and proliferate. And immune cells like the monocyte, the T cell and the B cell, and the B cell produces autoantibodies, which is very important in the context of this study. And at the bottom of the screen there, you can see that one of those autoantibodies is ACPA, which is present in about 70% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And um, this helps us diagnose rheumatoid arthritis from other forms of inflammatory arthritis. And um, so once these cells in our circulation are activated, they get a second signal that instructs them to migrate to the joint where they basically set up shop in the synovial membrane. They produce potent inflammatory mediators that cause the inflammation. Um, and so I suppose the context of those autoantibodies brings me to the second cohort. And these are patients that don't have rheumatoid arthritis at all. They could be any one of the three of us here on this call. So basically um, these are individuals that present to their GP. They have aches and pains. They don't have any clinical manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis, but what they do have is these autoantibodies in their blood. So we reckon that these individuals have the genetic background. They've had some environmental insults, like they might smoke or they might have had some pathogen that caused the insults, but they didn't get that second signal to cause those cells to migrate to the joints to develop rheumatoid arthritis. So that's kind of the focus of this study to try and figure out you know, can we find a signature 
in the patients with rheumatoid arthritis that possibly is also present in these individuals pre-disease and can we predict when they might develop rheumatoid arthritis? So that's our two cohorts and that was kind of the premise of the study. Could you tell us a bit more about monocytes in this context? I mean, if you're in my lab, depending on who you spoke to, they'd have a, a favorite cell. And Megan's and mine at the moment is the monocyte. But um, the monocyte is really, really important because it's one of the first critical innate effector cells central to driving rheumatoid arthritis. And I'm just going to really point out three main functions. Its first function is that they phagocytose antigens. So they try and get rid of you know, bad pathogens that come in. The second one is that they produce lots of pro-inflammatory mediators. And the third, which is really important in this context, that when they get that second signal, when they're in the blood to, you know, toddle off to the joints and set up shop there, once they get environmental influences in the joints, they can actually change into three different cell types. They can change into a dendritic cell, a macrophage, and an osteoblast. And those three cells are really important in further driving the inflammation in the joints and the dendritic cell and the macrophage, you know, cause the synovial inflammation to invade the cartilage. But that third cell, the osteoblast, causes um, basically holes to be eaten in your bone. And this causes the dysfunction. So they're really central to both the systemic and the actual joint inflammation to driving this disease. So they're really important. And um, so that's why we focus on the monocytes.